Hello everyone, welcome back to Medinair. The first part of the video contains the characteristic features of the organism, the pathogenesis, the signs and symptoms uh, of the tetanus and the staging types and differential diagnosis and so on. So I would suggest that you watch the part one of the video first so that you could get a better understanding of this video. So it's easy for you to grasp the concepts while discussing the treatment part. The link for that video will be on the description box below and also I'll pop an i button so that you can get an easy access to it. So in this video let's discuss about the treatment part for tetanus. So this basically uh, correlates all the general surgery part along with some uh, microbiology part so that it's helpful it's like it's the same thing right if you if you read it in surgery or in microbiology or in pathology or in any division tetanus remains tetanus right so that's why this video is so the patient affected by the tetanus is advised to admit it in the hospitals preferably in the special care units and it is also suggested that the patient is isolated in a dark room and that must be a quiet room because light and uh, sound can provoke convulsions so that dark and quiet room is ideal. The next step that we do is wound debridement. If it is small wound then we can go for wound debridement if it is a large wound we definitely need to do surgical excision so why do we do this because clostridium tetani as i mentioned in the previous video it's an obligate anaerobe so by all this wound and uh, or the surrounding area will be like doesn't have any blood supply so it will be like the area will be lacking oxygen so that becomes an anaerobic medium for the bacteria to grow so in order to prevent that we need to do wound abridgment or surgical excision depending on the size of the wound the next treatment option that we opt here is immunization which is given by either passive or active in passive immunization we inject immunoglobulins like human immunoglobulin which is anti tetanus globulin we call it atg which is given as 3000 units 3000 per unit i am stat so actually this is a human immunoglobulin so we don't need a test dose before injecting this um, antitetanus globulin usually immunization uh, any vaccination can cause some allergic reaction in terms of fever rashes and so on so but here it is a human immunoglobulin it can cause but to a less extent some allergic reactions so there is no test dose required for antitetanus globulin but when you go for anti tetanus serum actually anti tetanus globulin is quite expensive and it's not available that much easily so we patient also um, most of the time prefer for cost effective right so um, anti tetanus serum is preferred in most of the cases but here anti tetanus serum is actually in ho derived from an horse serum so it can cause allergy re allergic reactions to the human body so therefore we need some test dose before giving as a treatment to that patient we need some amount of it to test whether it's getting okay or not so the test dose is 1000 units intravenously you will give and test if it's acceptable then you will give a full dose of 1 lakh units which in which half of them are given in intramuscularly and half of them are given intravenously. So the next type of immunization that we can opt for is active immunization. The patient, uh, we can, to the patient we can give tetanus toxoid. We know TT injection in every case if you get injured, the best suggested uh, injection is TT injection. It will be given in first, second and third dose. Like first dose will be on the day you inject it. Second dose will be one month after the first dose and the third dose will be from six months after the first dose. So it will be like zero, one and six. And that's the schedule for tetanus toxoid injection. So it can be in two forms which is plain toxoid or adsorbed toxoid. Plain toxoid is formal toxoid and adsorbed is actually you will have that not absorption it's like adsorption it's attached to the surface. So it is adsorbed on aluminium hydroxide and phosphate, aluminium phosphate. So it is given either as alone as a single TT injection or it can be combined with other vaccine like as a triple vaccine 
in DPT, right? So in diphtheria, petiosis, tetanus, in that vaccine is also comes as a combination. The antibiotic form of treating the tetanus consists of the following regimen, which is uh, crystalline penicillin uh, of 20 lakh units, 6th hourly. And you can also give gentamicin and metronidazole injection. Erythromycin 500 milligram twice a day for 5 days is also suggested. For the convulsions, we can give diazepam 20 mg 4th hourly or 6th hourly and phenobarbitone 40 mg 6th hourly and chlorpromazine drug 25 mg 6th hourly. All these drugs are given intravenously. We can also give Riles tube to the patient initially for decompression and to prevent aspiration of the food contents that you take or the uh, gastric contents. But later they are used for feeding purpose. Also patient can be in, under catheterization. They can be given some IV fluids and electrolyte balance. Regular suction and clearance of the respiratory tract is done along with some nasal oxygen. Also patient is curarized and placed in ventilator. IPPR stands for increased positive pressure respiration. Right? So we can also put endotracheal intubation or tracheostomy for the patient who cannot breathe. So that's a mechanical ventilation kind of alternative. Patient must be under very good nursing care and we can also do some chest physiotherapy and steroids if rare complication of carditis arises. So that's it regarding the treatment part of the tetanus. I hope you guys found it helpful. So if you did, please do like this video and subscribe to Medinair. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.